Well, hello everybody, Harrison Painter here. It's time to expand this YouTube channel. So I've been making shorts here for the last month or so, and now we're gonna expand into some longer form content here, focused around the many things that I'm using to just live a more fulfilled life. My goal is to share what's working for me, what's not working for me, and hopefully I can inspire and motivate some of you out there to do the same, especially if you're struggling right now, if you're not feeling good, if you're overweight, if you're sluggish, if you're not living with that passion and purpose, hopefully we can help you get there and we can do it together. So just know you're not alone. Right now, I'm on a mission to lose over 100 pounds. The reason for that is I started this at 339 pounds and that freaks me out still to say out loud. Uh, but my goal is 235 pounds, and the reason for that is I want to face my biggest fear and go skydiving with my daughter, and 235 pounds is the max weight to do one of those tandem dives. Now, why do I want to face my biggest fear and skydive with my daughter? Well, my daughter had been suffering for quite some time with depression and trying to find her way in life. She's 23 years old, and, you know, she's on her journey. Well, she had tried so many different hobbies, so many different things. Uh, just I, I can't even go into how many different things that, that she attempted. But she really put in the work trying to find something that would fulfill her. Now, thankfully, she went to nursing school and she graduated, so she found fulfillment there. But there was one thing that really turned the corner for her. She snuck off and she went skydiving. She didn't tell me. She didn't tell mom. She just snuck off and did it. Now, keep in mind, my daughter was always very shy, very timid. I would have never really thought of her as brave and courageous, uh, kind of socially awkward, uh, but very beautiful. But once she made this jump, everything changed. Everything changed for her. It's like she had this, this feeling that she knew she could accomplish anything in life. And I'm just happy to say it's something that she continues to do to this day. She is on her 109th jump as of this recording. She's got an amazing group of friends. This skydiving community is just an incredible group of people from all over the globe. And it's actually a pretty small, tight-knit community. Uh, so now her friends have expanded all the way from Dubai, Argentina, Chile, Mexico and all over the United States. So it's really cool to see her and her friend group now and, and watch her interact with all these people. So that's, that's a big, big benefit. So now my biggest fear has always been heights. And I thought, what a better way to overcome this fear, this challenge, than to share this moment that has been life-changing for my daughter. So that's where the 235 to skydive thing comes from. So if you want to follow that hashtag, I'm pushing that, uh, whatever channel that you might be watching this on, I try to tag 235 to skydive in all of those videos and content. Now, how am I doing this weight loss program? Well, there's a few things that have in inspired this and I'm not going to be feeding the algorithms of YouTube by any means. I don't want to make the same videos over and over and over the same topic, the same formula. It's not who I am, and I'm just not going to conform to that. So it doesn't matter if one of you watch or a million of you watch. If I can inspire one person to make a difference, to get on the path to living that more fulfilled life, all of this will have been worth it. Plus, this is fun. So selfishly, I can create a diary and really document this for my kids, for my grandkids, for my great-grandkids, and hopefully inspire them a little bit as well. But back in 2014, 15, I took a year and I actually ate the vegan lifestyle. I was living in Los Angeles. It was a very easy lifestyle to keep, you know, very trendy, of course, in Los Angeles. And a lot of the restaurants there catered to vegans. So it was a very easy diet to stick to. I was cooking really cool foods. I was running a 5K a day. I was riding my bike 20 miles a day. I was in great shape. But. I never felt whole. I wasn't recovering quickly. There was just something missing. Now, I didn't take the time back then to figure it out. I had a serious health issue 
that brought me back to my home state of Indiana. I had to take a year off. I had a near-death experience, had to go through three surgeries uh, and get healthy again on, on that front. Uh, nothing to do with related to diet or lifestyle, just a, a, a serious issue that happened. Now, coming back to Indiana, so easy to get back on the standard American diet. And by that, I mean a very unhealthy standard American diet. So for the next few years, I continued down that path and I started feeling worse and worse and worse. Then 2020 hit. And of course, we're trapped in our homes. So now what's happening? Stress eating, all the things that go with that. We're kind of sedentary. We're not moving around. We're not doing a whole lot. Uh, and I ballooned up to 339 pounds. Now, that's a little bit embarrassing to say out loud, but such is life. And I know many of you out there potentially have had these same type of things happen to you. And maybe you're in that situation right now. But it got worse. I couldn't climb a flight of stairs without huffing and puffing. My knees were in terrible shape. And it got to the point where when we were finally back to work and I was leaving the house, I mean, my office was on the second floor and I literally had to go to work, climb the flight of stairs, stop and sit for a few minutes because I would literally start to sweat and be huffing and puffing. I'd have to wait five or 10 minutes to get my bearings and then walk into the office because of course I didn't want anybody seeing me you know, in that condition. Well, it got so bad that I was even researching wheelchairs. How was I going to get around? I felt that I had turned 50, and for some reason that sounded so old to me, and that I had crossed the Rubicon, right? My health had taken a turn, and this is the path I'm on. I need to accept it. And I'm just going to have to deal with it in that fashion, right? So, of course, I went to the doctor and they want to give me all these pills. You know, the only diet that they recommend was just cutting out fried foods and sugars and, you know, sweets and those type of things. But not really any type of solid nutritional advice. So just really a lot of pills. Well, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Number one, I, I just don't trust a lot of these doctors. I definitely don't trust the medications that they're giving. And as I started doing more and more research and going back down the nutrition uh, rabbit holes, I started thinking about what can I do to reverse aging, reverse some of the things that are going on with me? I knew that being vegan wasn't going to do it, even though it helped and even though it's a, a, a fairly good diet, it didn't get me there. So going into this year, I decided to try carnivore. Now I've done every fad diet on the planet um, and none of them seem to have really worked. But I thought, you know, I've never really focused on carnivore. And then you start researching kind of the science and the biology and all that. And yeah, not a fad diet. This kind of makes sense. This is a big chunk of the way people have been eating since the beginning of time. So... As I started researching it, and I've always loved the taste of meat, I really missed eating meat when I took that time off as a vegan. I craved it. Now I kind of understand why, and we'll be going deeper into all this in the future. But so going into this year, I started the vegan diet or the uh, carnivore diet, and within three four months, I had lost about fifty six pounds. Incredible. I felt good, even though I didn't fully understand why yet. I mean, I was doing some research, but I wasn't super deep into it, just kind of surface level research. But I was getting the results. I was feeling good. Everything was going great. Well, like everything else, life kind of can get in the way, right? So I took about three months off. Uh, my wife got breast cancer, so we had to go through her surgery, all the stress and emotion that go with that. My daughter was involved in a skydiving accident and broke her leg. Could have been much worse, but she healed up in 87 days. And uh, she broke her leg on her 99th jump. And I'm just so proud of her and happy to say in 87 days, she went to the doctor at 8 a.m., got cleared. She was in the air by 10 a.m. and had her 100 jump in before noon on that day. So incredible. 
So she's back on track, right? But both of them, and then I was working out and I tore my rotator cuff. So you have all of these issues that kind of popped up. And of course, two of those issues were massively stressful, as you can imagine, right? A lot of emotion, everything that goes with that. So I had to be there for both of them emotionally, physically, as a caregiver, and all of that. So in the middle of that stress, as I'm trying to be the, you know, strong male taking care of his family, I started stress eating. I started eating a lot of junk food, a lot of garbage, a lot of fast food, a lot of whatever, just garbage. Now, I am happy to say in that three months, I only gained back 10 pounds. And that was it, because even though I was stress eating and eating a lot of garbage, I was still eating less because I had that four months worth of discipline on carnivore that did carry over. Plus, my body had already kind of gone through some changes and it was adapting and it wasn't, it was processing everything different, if you will. So now I've been back on it for 24 days as of this recording. I've already lost almost, I've definitely lost, let's see. So I started at 339. I'm currently at 287.1. So I'm down 51.9 pounds. So I still have a few more pounds to go for where I was. But in 24 days, I already feel incredible. I have a laser focus. I'm not waking up with brain fog anymore. I don't take naps anymore. I'm never hungry. The cravings are gone. And I feel incredible. So now I've been doing deeper dives into why. Why do I feel incredible? And I'm going to make a lot of future videos covering some of those reasons. But wow. Now, I know this diet isn't for everybody. And I want to make this clear. I'm no doctor. I'm none of that. I'm just sharing what's working for me. And I'll share some stories of it working for other people. But you still need to take the time to do the research, make sure it's right for you, and maybe experiment a little bit with this. Now, I'm one that jumps right in. I can't do anything kind of half-assed. So uh, day 24, I feel amazing. The only warning that I'll give you from my experience is that first couple of weeks can be a little bit rough. Your body's going through a lot of changes, right? And this diet is high fat, mid protein, zero carbs, basically. Definitely under 50 carbs. So what's going to happen is that first couple of weeks, you're going to have what they call the keto flu, which is basically, you know, your body, I mean, these carbs, these sugars, they're drugs, and you're going to have withdrawal symptoms on that. The second issue might be an upset stomach and diarrhea because you're flooding all of this stuff out of your body and you're going through this massive change. So just beware of, of that too. Those are two kind of things. But this is only a two to three week period for a lot of people. For me, it was about a week, week and a half period that I went through this. And of course, this time, the reboot of the diet was only a few days. But once you get through that, oh, my heavens. I, I can't even, I feel like Superman. It's incredible. So I highly advise looking into it, thinking about it, coming back to this channel as I share more about this journey, watching the shorts that I have as I kind of share what I eat every day and my exercise routines and all that. Now, I'm also going to be talking about things on this channel like AI and EQ, now, you might be wondering, what the hell do those two things, what are they, and why would you talk about them? Well, when we were going through the family tragedies, I'm an entrepreneur. I run my own business. So I had to make a decision. Do I continue the momentum of my job and keep everything rolling? Or do I take time off to give my family the love, care, and support that they need while we're going through all this stuff? And I'm sure many of you out there have been in a very similar situation. It's a very hard decision. I have to provide for my family financially, but yet I need to be there for them emotionally, physically. I gotta be present for them. Well, what do you do? Well, I started researching all these different artificial intelligence type tools. I do video editing, I do live events, I do marketing, I do all these different things. And a lot of them are very time consuming. Well, I started uncovering all these different AI tools that I could use. And I was doing all that work in half the time. So it gave me a big chunk of my life back that I could now dedicate to my family. So much so 
Then I ended up writing a book, AI, Your Roadmap to Fuel Innovation and Amplify Profits, now available on Amazon.com. And the inspiration for this book was you can get your life back, whether it's marketing, customer service, all of those different things this book will cover for you. And you can kind of learn how to use this technology, whether it's to improve your production, like I said, do double in half the time, whether it's to future-proof your career, that you're going to stay on top of this stuff and keep it going so you don't lose your job. That's what that's about. Now, EQ. EQ is emotional intelligence. And what that is, is the ability to identify, understand, and manage your emotions. It's a discipline. I'm an EQ practitioner and coach. Now, why that's important is as you're getting more and more disciplined, diets, a lifestyle change is 80% mindset. It's only 20% the cravings, the habits, all of those type of things. So as you're creating more self-awareness, as you're creating more self-discipline, as you're able to identify, understand, and manage those emotional triggers that make you eat, as you start becoming more self-aware of the food that you're putting in your mouth and what its purpose is, it just makes everything that much easier. And emotional intelligence works across the board in every aspect of your life. If you're trying to find your passion, your purpose, it will help you get there faster. If you've already found it, it will help you expedite and optimize the process. It allows me to understand who I am and what I'm feeling. And in return, I can start to understand who other people are. It creates a lot more empathy and you become just respectful of everybody around you because you start to really understand that we're all carrying burdens, all of us, every single one of us. And empathy is the pathway to respect. So that's why I'll be talking about those two topics. And then, of course, carnivore and my everyday uncoverings of how amazing this lifestyle is. Now, look, the cool thing about the carnivore world, I've noticed they're not intense the way the vegan world was. And that, look, we all add things. I add in my diet once a week. I'll eat an avocado. Maybe I'll throw some raspberries and my A2 yogurt. So it's not like this super strict militant type group that when I was in the vegan world, it was kind of rough. I actually got thrown out of a message board one time because I just refused the concept of making my cat vegan. Like the biology doesn't make sense, right? But I actually got thrown off a message board for that. Uh, now, people are passionate and I get it, but um, you know, I really want to focus more on what people are doing right instead of trying to point out what everybody's doing wrong. So, you know, again, whether one person watches this, a million watches this, if I can motivate, inspire one person, one person to get off the couch, to start moving, to start thinking about the food that they put in their mouth, and to start living a more fulfilled life, this channel will have done its job. So this is your invitation to join me on this journey, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, all right, that's it for this video. My name is Harrison Painter, and until next time, live prosperous and love it.